There are five different viruses that can cause hepatitis, all of them from different viral families. However, the signs and symptoms are very similar. Episodes of fever, jaundice, and elevated ALT and AST. So in discussing each of these viruses individually, hepatitis A virus is an RNA picornavirus, is transmitted primarily by fecal oral route, has a short incubation time of about three weeks, and there are no asymptomatic carrier states for hepatitis A. We commonly see hepatitis A in daycares and kindergartens because of the fecal oral route. So remember for hepatitis A, it's asymptomatic usually, it's an acute infection, and it's alone, meaning no carriers. Hepatitis B virus is a DNA hepatinovirus, it's transmitted primarily by parenteral, sexual, and maternal fetal routes. It has a longer incubation period, about three months, and you can have a hepatitis B carrier state. It uses cellular RNA polymerase to transcribe RNA from the DNA template within the virus. It uses reverse transcriptase to transcribe the DNA genome from the RNA intermediate that's made by the cell. However, the virion enzyme is a DNA-dependent DNA polymerase. So for hepatitis B, remember bloodborne. Hepatitis C virus is an RNA flavivirus is transmitted primarily by a blood and resembles HBV in its course and severity. It does have a carrier state as well, and it's a common cause of post-transfusion hepatitis and of hepatitis among IV drug users in the United States. So for hep C, remember chronic cirrhosis, carcinoma, and carriers. It's the most commonly chronic hepatitis virus. It can cause cirrhosis and liver carcinoma, and it has a high carrier state. HDV, or hepatitis D virus, has a delta agent. It's actually a defective virus that requires the HB surface antigen to have an envelope. HDV is actually most associated with co-infection with HBV or a superinfection in patients that already have HBV. The latter carries the worst prognosis. As with HBV, HDV can also have a carrier state. So for hepatitis D, remember defective and dependent on HBV. Hepatitis E virus is an RNA hepivirus. It's transmitted enterically and causes waterborne epidemics. It resembles hepatitis A in its course, as well as its severity and its incubation, so it's more acute and less severe. We do see, however, a high mortality rate in pregnant women. So for hep E, remember your E's, enteric, expectant mothers, and epidemics. Both HBV and HCV, as I mentioned, predispose a patient to chronic active hepatitis. This can lead to liver cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. So A and E, remember the fecal oral route, hepatitis A, hepatitis E. The vowels hit your bowels. Because naked viruses don't rely on an envelope, they are not destroyed in the gut. In order to diagnose hepatitis B, we use several different serologic markers that we can see here. The first one is the coat protein, or the HBS, or surface antigen. We also use the core protein, which is the HBC, core antigen. We can also see the DNA genome and the DNA polymerase within this slide. Let's talk about the serologic markers. We look both for the antigen and the antibody. The first one is the anti-HAV antibody, which is an IgM antibody. This one is specific for testing for hepatitis A. It's an IgM antibody to hepatitis A. It's the best test to detect active hep A. There's also a test available for the HAV antibody in the IgG form. Remember that IgG is a memory antibody. It comes along a little bit later. So the IgG antibody presence indicates prior hepatitis A infection, and this protects against reinfection. Now, in speaking about hepatitis B, Again, several different markers that we use. The HBS antigen, or hepatitis B surface antigen, again referring to that coat protein, is indicative of active hepatitis B infection. The anti-HBS antigen, or antibody to HBS antigen, indicates immunity to hepatitis B. HBC antigen, that again, the core antigen, is associated with the core of HBV, indicating specific infection with hepatitis B. The anti-HBC antigen is the antibody 
to that core antigen. If it's an IgM, again, that refers or indicates an acute or recent infection. If it's an IgG, then it indicates chronic disease. This one is positive during the window period, which we'll see in a minute. The HBE antigen is a second different antigenic determinant in the HBV core. HBE antigen indicates active viral replication and therefore high transmissibility. If you have antibodies to this antigen, anti-HBE antigen, then that indicates low transmissibility. Now let's look at these markers chronologically through an infectious process. In the beginning, in the incubation period, the important diagnostic test is the HBS antigen. The level of detection grows in between months one through five of exposure. The next one to come up is the HBE antigen, which is about two to four months of exposure, followed by the anti-HBC antibody, which will come up at about two months, and then level off and last a long time throughout. So you can actually see this one during early and late convalescence. The next marker to come up during the equivalent zone or the window period, remember that's anti-HBC. That's the only one that you'll see during that equivalent zone. Sometimes we can detect anti-HBE during that time as well. And then lastly, we have the anti-HBS. So at the late stage convalescence, we have anti-HBS antibodies available in the serum that we can test. So throughout the diagnostic process, there are different markers that we would look for. Remember that with hepatitis, we're always going to look at ALT and AST. Remember, viral hepatitis, ALT is greater than AST. That's different than alcoholic hepatitis, where AST is greater than ALT. So again, thinking about the test and at what point we would see or use this to identify, remember that the HBS antigen is very early on. So we can see that in acute disease, but we don't see the antigen itself during the window phase, the recovery, or the, if you're immunized. However, if you're a chronic carrier and you keep producing, you will always have some presence of that antigen, so you will always be able to detect it. Now, if you're using HBS antibody or antibody to that HBS antigen, you're going to see that only during complete recovery or with immunization. You won't see it during the acute disease, you won't see it during the window phase, and you won't see it in a chronic carrier state because those people don't have immunity to the hepatitis B virus. With HBC antibody, remember this is to that core, we can see this one during acute disease. It pops up rather early, and we also see it during the window phase. This is the only one that we see during the window phase. We see it with complete recovery. We also see it during a chronic carrier state, so you do develop antibodies to that HBC antigen. We don't, however, see it in the immunized population.